So my talk will be about um, API in the HTTP world. So before I can uh, start, maybe I can ask you a question. How many of you are web developers? Like, okay, that's a lot. How many of you have written or contribute to a web server yourself? Or you have like written a web server? Okay, luckily I don't have some tough questions. And <laughs> because this talk is not about like how do you implement HTTP2 or how do you write a, a web server in HTTP, uh, following the HTTP2 specification because HTTP2 has come along in 2015, the specification. So it's quite standard. My talk will be focusing on how, how it is used in the real life. So to start, <coughs> to start, I will talk about the story of HTTP, the history, and then I will talk about uh, a high-level introduction of HTTP two. What are the key points we need to take take note, and then I will uh, talk something relate to uh, what are the tools we use, uh, what are the tools we use, uh, uh, what are the tools that use HTTP two, and some case studies at last. Let's talk about what are the futures. First of all, let's go back to 1991. So this guy is the father of uh, internet. Uh, at 1991, when uh, internet was first set up, uh, I think at that time there is no browser. Uh, the only thing we are going to uh, view is just some uh, hypertext document. So here comes the first HTTP protocol, which is 0 0.9. We can call it the one-line protocol. As you can see from the example here, it's quite simple. You just tell the URL, and then the server will return you the hyper uh, document, and then the connection will close. So it's, it's just that simple, because at the time, there's uh, not much things. So time flies. Now we come to 1996. During that five years, basically, there is a lot of rapid uh, growth of the protocol itself, as well as something uh, some new has come out, which is the web browser. So at that time, the National Center Supercomputing Applications, NCSA for short, has come out with a newer version, which is 1.0. At this time, the hiders has come in, which we are quite familiar. And at, the, at that time, you can uh, respond more than just hypertext. Like for example, you can respond uh, with a picture still every connection will close after you send the request, uh, after you receive the response. So what we are living now is at the age of internet standard, which is 1.1. There are a lot of improvement has been added. Uh, some known ones are the keep alive, uh, <coughs> keep alive connections, pi uh, request pipelining, and as well as the trunk response. So. As you can see from the example here, after you, the client has sent the request to the server, so server can choose to send back the response in chunks. And after sending the request, uh, we can still keep the connection open for reuse. So this um, has improved the speed a lot, but there are still a lot of pain points. Basically, um, obviously, because from 1999 until today, is 20 years has passed. A lot of new things ha have been introduced, like for example, if you are doing live streaming, you need to uh, reply to the client of videos. And <coughs> uh, because of the website has grown as well, so the number of the document we need to transfer also become larger and larger. That's why um, even though we, uh, there are a lot of, a lot of improvement from HTTP 1.1, Still, we will sometimes <coughs> see uh, some uh, slowness or loading times. And HTTP 1.1 has become so huge that not every server can implement all the features from it. So at this time, we want something new, which is the HTTP 2. The key features of HTTP 2 basically can summarize in three main things. Uh, if you want to know more details, you may read the specs yourself. But 
I will just give you three main reasons. First one will be the uh, binary. It, it is a binary protocol. That means uh, it's unlike the HP one version. We can read the request and the response ourselves. This time, the request and response is not human readable. It's binary. And there is something new called uh, multiplexing, which means the server, uh, while you are while the client sending the request, the server can also send the response back already. And we also have some uh, promising features like server push and header compression. Uh, later, I will uh, link back to this when I talk about the use case. So, talking about what is using HTTP2, the first thing come to our mind, of course, is browser. Actually, uh, Chrome will be the first browser uh, implementing HTTP2 because HTTP2 actually uh, comes large, uh, largely from the Google SPT protocol. And as you can see from the uh, diagram here, Chrome is the first one. and until now, most of the browser has support HTTP2 already. Besides that, uh, most of the servers like Apache or NGX or even Microsoft uh, web server has already support HTTP2. Uh, for in the programming world, like for example, Node.js and Golang has already native support at, for the HTTP2 as well. And even the large uh, content net uh, content delivery network like Amazon CloudFront or Fastly has support HTTP2 as well. So let's come to our first uh, use case. Is still sorry, just a minute. Let me open the internet. Um, as you can see, at the time that the people are promoting uh, HTTP2, they have uh, written two uh, demo case for the browser to see the see the difference uh, to to know the speed between HTTP2 and HTTP1. So. <coughs> Okay. If let's go to this web page, <coughs> this is how loading is done by HTTP2. It's around uh, 70 milliseconds. Let's go to HTTP1. I'm still waiting. Yeah, that's how the difference it is. So this is from the browser. Another use case will be in the IoT world. Basically, last year, Amazon has released their product, uh, which is the Amazon Alexa. Um, the idea is your Alexa device will capture your audio and then send back the audio to backend service for processing. And then the after the processing, the response will send back to your device and the device will play back the audio. So let's imagine if you are doing this using HTTP 1, every, every time you finish the uh, sending the audio request to the backend and uh, receive the response, you need to create another connection, which is quite uh, not a good sign. And I'm sure it will be slow as well. So that's why Amazon has chosen HTTP2 as their base to build this uh, Alexa device. Besides that, uh, Google ha uh, has come out with the RPC framework last year as well. And the base for it is also HTTP2. Uh, I personally, I think the reason why they choose HTTP2 is because uh, gRPC use uh, protocol buffer and protocol buffer I itself is binary for serialization so it's a perfect match uh, why not just leverage on the binary protocol for HTTP2 I, I think this um, framework uh, can 
be another talk as well. So if we have any expertise in this field, next time you can give a talk on this as well. So for the future, before HTTP2, I think if we want to do a real-time communication, we will always think of WebSocket or SocketIO. And in the IoT world, there is always the UDP protocol, which is MQTT. I think uh, most likely these three might be replaced over, but it's just my guess. Um, on the other hand, Google is always pushing to the new ends. So now they are coming out with something called Quick UDP Interaction Connections. This, so what Google has done is on the TCP side, they have already uh, improved the performance and allowed. So now they want to do something with UDP. And there is always WebRTC as well. So in the future, maybe they will come with a HTTP tree that combine all this together. That's my guess for the future. So here are the reference. And do you guys have any questions? The biggest feature for HTTP2 is multiplexing, right? Yeah. the request response. So that, uh, you can have an application with multiple resources that you can get in one row from the browser, right? Rather than one request per client, then I run this initial and send a second request, right? Actually, for multiplexing, most likely, whenever you uh, your browser has connect to the server, it's only using one uh, TCP connection. TCP TCP yeah, connection, right? yeah. Actually, I'm not sure whether I can show the demo for the. Yeah, because of the internet problem, I think. Um, yeah, maybe some other time I can show the demo for uh, Amazon Alexa. Yeah, I had one app that was done in HTTP2. Okay. Using Polymer. Oh, okay. Because Polymer generates both uh, HTTP1 version using Wonder mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and HTTP2 <coughs> version where all the resources are separate. Yep. But the problem is no taker for HTTP2. Yet. Yeah. Because a lot of. Yeah, not everybody has upgraded to HTTP2. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the end of my talk. Thank you. And